Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I oppose this bill in entirety, and I submit that this bill is irredeemably and irretrievably bad and inimical to the well-being of Kenyans at large. Mr. Speaker, that is actually essentially conceded by the chair of the committee. Because you realize, Mr. Speaker, that in moving the bill, he actually ended up moving the report rather than the bill. And he essentially <laughs> dwelt so much on the things to be removed from the bill rather than the contents of the bill. That means, Mr. Speaker, that the right thing to do is to reject the bill so that we go back to the drawing board. Alternatively, they withdraw it and put all those things in the bill that they will bring. Because to say we intend to is a wish proposition. There is no assurance that it will be done. Mr. Speaker, 90% of Kenyans have rejected this bill. 90%. And the majority of all those who have submitted their memos have also rejected this bill. Mr. Speaker, it's for a very simple reason. And the reason is this. Excessive Mr. Speaker, I stand on, uh, you know, we have a responsibility. To, uh, I, I, is it, no, 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 wait, wait, calm down. I stand on standing on number 95A, and I want to know whether Honorable Otende Omolo, with all due respect, when he says and stands on national TV here in Parliament, where we are broadcasting live, and says that 90% of Kenyans are opposed to this bill. What statistics has he laid on this table to say that he has done a research and found out that 90%, because, you know, 90%, Mr. Speaker, is mathematics. These are numbers, and numbers do not lie. This, you must be responsible of the statement that you place on this table. So, Mr. Speaker, please, have, I, let I, him I, substantiate I, where he has gotten the figures of 90% from. Proceed, Dr. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that objection is symptomatic to the problem this side is having. They don't listen to the radio stations, they don't read the printed media, they don't watch TV stations. If they did, they would not ask that question. Let me continue, Mr. Speaker. Otienda Molo, you are normally more balanced than that. Kagombe cannot be the side. He's an individual. Speaker, I'll proceed. Yes. Mr. Speaker, the point I'm making is that excessive and generalized overtaxation of Kenyans will only further burden Kenyans who are already suffering. The cost of living is so high, and therefore it's a lie to say that you want this um, you know, budget to pass in order to alleviate the suffering of Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, I wish to submit that there are only three answers to the problems we have right now. One austerity measures, two, reduction of corruption, and three, rationalization of government. Mr. Speaker, I do not understand how a government that says that already there's a problem insists on increasing the overall budget from 3.3 trillion, which it was in the previous year, to 3.67 trillion, if you admit there's no money. What is the principle? If you have no money, you cut your coat according to size. So you don't say that you must increase it and therefore you must overtax. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, how does a government that says we are short of money explain why you must create offices that we do not need? You do not need the office of the prime cabinet secretary. You do not need all the 24 cabinet offices. The constitution allows you a minimum of 14. You do not need over 51 principal secretaries. You do not need over 50 CSS. And all these are staking public money. If you say, and it is unfortunate that a member of parliament should seek to mislead the public by saying that members of parliament already get money for houses, that is not true because it is a loan that we pay at 3%. But if that is your position, then take away that free house because we don't have it. Don't tax Kenyans on it. Mr. Speaker, corruption, corruption, corruption. In all these words, the word anti-corruption you will never hear from the words of those who speak for the government side. In fact, you only see the demonstration of those who are facing corruption charges being withdrawn. It is on record from the previous president that we lose 2 billion shillings every day to corruption. 
if we could even just reduce that to one billion, we would you know, fix the gap that they are talking about in government. Then there's rationalization, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you are aware, and this House has debated, in the previous uh, parliament, there was a report that suggested that we do not need the over 530 uh, ministries and departments of government that we have, the parastotals. Most of them are duplicative, and it was suggested that we should reduce them to barely 50. Instead of reducing them, we have a situation where we are sustaining even those which are moribund, those which are not working. We are giving opportunity to others to earn a living. Mr. Speaker, as I finish, uh, Mr. Speaker, my, Mr. Speaker, I, Mr. Speaker, my two minutes were taken. Can I get my two minutes back, please? My two minutes. Yes. Mr. Speaker, two closing remarks. You must listen to us, because even if you use the majority to pass this, there's still the courts. And even if you deal with the courts, there's still the people who are sovereign. Two things. One, you cannot have a situation where you are bringing the housing tax here. I want to invite you to note, first of all, that under Schedule 6, the role of housing is for the counties, it's not for the national government. And I invite you to look at Clause 8D. The national government is only to do the housing policy. So when you are bringing the question of housing and you're introducing the tax, you're actually amending the constitution through the back door. And it also means then that this bill should go to the Senate because the Senate must have a role in anything that affects the counties. And that is a point that you need to bear in mind. Lastly, it is a matter of the constitution that you cannot introduce servitude by telling someone that they must pay tax, which will not benefit them, and will go to the shareholders, as uh, your leaders have told us, that is servitude. Servitude that we must reject, and we must reject this bill in totality. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Dr. Mola.